Hey guys, welcome back to Clockwork Dandy Needles for another breakdown of The Ancient Magus Bride, episode number five. Welcome back, guys. Thank you so much for returning. Or if you are new, hello and welcome to The Noodle Bowl. I am Becca. I break down anime every single week. We are now one week away from my midway review where I'm going to be crowning top three anime, top three OPs and EDs so far. It's going to be interesting because... Every single episode at the moment seems to be knocking my top three about. I don't particularly feel too strongly, so I'll go into details a bit when it comes to that video. But do make sure you guys are subscribed so you don't miss out on it. And if you are enjoying my stuff, please do consider giving us a little bit of a subscribe. It really does help. Before I get going, I am really suffering from hay fever right now, so I sound really bad. To me, I think I sound bad. You guys might think I sound absolutely fine, which is great if that is the case. Another really good episode, which I think gives us more world building. It allows us to understand and how things are run in a sense or the at least big major families that are going on the rules we suddenly got the way that things run the hierarchy things do make a little bit more sense the episode hits me in a way that a bit more personal i do associate very heavily with chise it goes through a lot of stuff that i relate to especially in this episode in particular i don't like going too personal in these videos because i know that it's not what you're here for but i have to just show you guys why i relate or why i might think a certain way learning a lot we do learn a lot about the main characters first lucy exchange initially made me feel really really sad for chise i get that she's trying to look out for her she's trying to tell her to stop apologizing or stop trying to read the room and please everybody the way she comes across because obviously she's quite blunt and it did make me feel really sad for chise because chise felt very awkward there's a lot of really awkward pauses in the writing which creates the atmosphere good writing going on chise having to take a breath after lucy leaves a nice little reminder it says that Chisei doesn't really quite like confrontation and finding the school daunting. Feelings of anxiety, the feelings of trauma because she's had previous experiences. The entire exchange was very awkward. I felt bad for her because it looked like she was being shunted into the corner. Chisei taking more of a submissive role in it all, which makes me feel sad as well because I get it. She feels uncomfortable to be in her own room but again you get why Lucy's angry because she's like, you know, you can come in regardless because it's your room. She's trying to be nice in a really roundabout way. Some people are just like that and that's just how they are. They show they care in a really different way. I guess I'm more on the Chise side of things, but I do get both characters. And Lucy this week does come out. She's quite the interesting character and she finally opens up at the end, which is really, really nice. Zoe slash Ivy. I think the name is actually Zoe Ivy. We knew he was finding Chise uncomfortable to be around. Again, it made me very sad. This episode hit me. It made me feel also really sad. It's because I'm kind of dealing with the same situation where somebody is just avoiding me hard pass or talk to other people in the room but talk and ignore me on purpose and i just understand this feeling the idea of just being ignored the anime is very good at writing anxiety and pauses it makes me the viewer feel very awkward as well watching the situation as you can see ivy doesn't want to be around she says so ivy is missing out just misses out on hanging out with his friend but at the same time she say very quickly picks up on it you do generally pick up quite quickly when somebody is avoiding you doesn't want to be around you sadly more negative energy that she's picking up on in general it just doesn't make you feel great it makes you feel really sad it makes you feel a bit isolated and bad because you wonder what have i done is it my fault very nicely written sequence again we've got two very awkward scenes set up after each other making me feel all that angst as well for being at school now we do get a bit of information about the seven important families seven is just generally a very magical number the seven families who just didn't want magic to disappear after the wars that we've been told about some of these families are present in the school students. Rion, who doesn't want anything to do with his name. He doesn't want anything to do with the obligations of the family. He wants to totally move out, which does make him a very interesting character in the sense I do think he's quite fascinating as a character and I still don't get any negative vibes. I know none of the familiars, none of the spirits want to really get to know him because he smells at rust. And I've been thinking about the rust thing for a while and it does make me wonder if A, he's weak or B, he smells of blood. Those are the only two reasons I could think of. But at the moment, I'm not really getting negative vibes from him. If anything, I, I see him wanting to go out and do his own thing. He doesn't want to be attached to his family. He doesn't really want to be shackled, in a sense, with big, important families. You must act in a certain way, which we do see with people like Philomela. Perhaps the other girl, and I can't remember her name, the blonde one. She's also one of those big families, because I think they did the thing where they went through the families, and we see some of them who we've met 
already and I think she was there for the healing family. Definitely some things that are just better left unasked. Told about the Webster tragedy, which we do get some hints a little bit later on on what that entails, but in general it just doesn't sound very pleasant. The name tragedy never really brings anything good. On the phone, Lucy herself didn't really seem happy. She looked quite angry and irritated. I did wonder if it was family members, but by the sounds of it, it's not. So it might just be grandparents, further away relatives. It would seem that her family are overseas. So it'd be interesting to find out where her family are initially from and whether the seven families all originate in the same country. Are they from different continents or are they from just different places in general and whether that means anything as well. When Chise confronts Zoe, big, big brave, a magical brave. I can't do this kind of thing this kind of thing makes me just anxious in general she say trying to be that bigger person i'm just gonna apologize because if, even if i have upset you i don't want that to be a case here's me apologizing even if it's not the case or i don't understand the situation i just don't want you hurt i don't want the silence i don't want to be avoided and i don't want you feeling bad which is really nice she says just that kind of character who wears her heart on the sleeve but it is really really sad to hear zoe call her a monster Obviously, this is prejudice and she makes a pre-judgment without really having informa any information, which thankfully all gets ironed out afterwards. But it was really, really sad because it's not really the case. And if you guys had communicated, obviously, communication is key. It is king. But it is also very difficult. People struggle to communicate, as we can see here as well. With Lucy, I'm just not a fan of ignoring people. I feel like you, you could be civil that everybody has something that they just don't want to talk about or they just want to keep hidden. Immediately fought Medusa with the snakes and then I remember Gorgon's hypersensitivity coming to the front again. This is a condition we've noticed coming up in animes more and more recently. There was another one recently. Bubble. If you ever watched Bubble, which came as a movie, I think it might have been like animated by Wit, dealt with hypersensitivity too. So there's been a lot more attention to it. Zoe simply just been overwhelmed and as soon as that he comes under stress, he just transforms, which is just a nice little addition. To it did initially feel like Zoe was projecting onto Chise about being a monster because those essentially seem to be his own feelings or he, he seems to think that his body is cursed or it's making snakes he feels bad about the way he is which is really really sad because communication is king Chise is able to tell everybody the little group anyway that it's because I'm cursed it's actually this is what you're sensing I am technically human just getting the things off your chest is quite cathartic we do actually get to see Lucy finally smile around animals which is completely relatable that we've had a lot of growth with these characters in particular that i guess and these are our mains for the season i like them i think brian's quite interesting chise is obviously i, I relate so heavily chise may as well be my, my anime self lucy i have a lot of respect for i understand how she is and it's nice to see her starting to opening up because she's the one who essentially says we've all got things that we just sometimes don't want people to know which links up with what zoe's dad says and i think that is one of our ongoing themes for the episode is just everybody sometimes has something they don't feel comfortable talking about but sometimes it is good to find someone that you can talk and discuss it essentially what i believe zoe's dad really wants is for zoe to go out there find people that will accept zoe for zoe essentially just get to learn the world get to understand the world that you're in and socialize and it's a very good situation zoe needs this it's very key that you get out there and start understanding the world that you're in philomela i'm still gonna get this name wrong every time it comes up I'm told that she's from a prestigious intelligence gathering family which makes me think spies whenever i think about it, like mi5 kind of thing it does technically explain the way that she apparates and she's able to create smoke because it feels like that would be passed down by blood or maybe skills are hereditary where she would have picked those up because what would be perfect for a intelligence gathering spy family well being able to be undetected which is essentially what she does and then she gets caught she is a character who i feel bad for because she looks sad and she doesn't look comfortable she still looks really sick i don't know why she looks sick and i'm getting those vibes that she's not maybe sleeping very well it's the way that she says if it's an order you might need to make it a bit clearer oh that kind of made me think that perhaps at home her home life isn't so great because maybe it's all just business 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 this is how we speak you're not spoken to nicely because she doesn't recognize it as her being nice or she's trying to request something from her but Chise does finally get to call in her request i'm expecting us to have some backstory for her coming up at some point very serious contract the contract is scary 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 you're gonna have your throat burn if you end up talking even if it's by accident so it's best not get drunk in this world it doesn't feel safe what happens if you're talking you sleep that would be rough it's a very serious contract moment and it does make me worry a little bit the guy does fall away i don't know if that still includes him however i'm thinking about this a bit too deep 
did make me rise a few eyebrows, but it feels like that's just what Rion's family is kind of known for. A bit of information on the Webster tragedy, which again, tragedies never really mean anything good, guys, unless it's the song. Lucy's family is dead. Something has happened, and she does state that people like you are the reason why they're dead. Whether somebody set them up, whether somebody handed them over for something, they were killed as a result. Maybe the families aren't as close-knit as they appear because they're both from big families. The world is starting to open up to me, so I'm starting to learn a lot and I'm starting to put some pieces together. Mainly this episode is looking at the idea of family names, you being bound by blood and obligation, whether you have to abide by it and how much of it is actually more of a curse. The lighting when Violet starts to drags Rose away. The lighting is nice. It starts to get warmer. It starts to get brighter when she starts to suggest, let's just run away, which I really like because it's the idea of just leaving it all behind and getting away from all of the faff that comes with being these prestigious families. And I bet it is a burden. I can't myself relate to being born into a very powerful family, but I can imagine it would be tough because you're going to have to uphold the name and you're going to have a lot of expectations placed upon you but even before you were born like any kids born into those families they're going to be like heirs and they're going to have a lot of expectations so i think it's a very nice episode to set up the families get us understanding the world who some of these people really are and some of the strife between them and how being from a prestigious family isn't all great all the time but it's nice to start getting a lot of opening up. We've got people talking to each other. A few people know a bit about Chise, which is nice. It always makes you feel a little bit better when at least somebody knows. The contract there makes us a bit relieved that nobody's going to be saying anything. So we can kind of trust these guys. It's nice to know that there are allies in the sense, people who understand the situation. It will be interesting to see where we go from here. Hopefully getting some backstories on people like Lucy and Phila Miller generally a good episode i really enjoyed it i did feel a little bit sad because i kind of related to one of the situations thankfully this situation got resolved maybe eventually mine will i'm not holding high hopes but i enjoyed the episode i thought it was good the lighting is great this anime is very good at building atmospheres even if it's an atmosphere of feeling awkward or feeling a little bit just nervous and not really wanting to talk very much i like that i'm really getting that thank you guys so much for tuning in i hope you are looking after yourselves i will see you guys again next week bye bye guys